when you look at the situation that our cities are in, here in Austin and virtually all the large cities in the world, folks can't afford to live in the cities that they love anymore. Things have not changed in real estate since 1884. Like this is when they built the first skyscraper in Chicago. It was 10 floors high. We need to do something different. Look at that ass. If we keep trying to solve this affordability crisis with the same ways of thinking and methods that we've used since 1884. That's great. We're just going to dig ourselves into a deeper hole. The tiny house movement is really a sort of hybrid of a few of those things, but going smaller. The problem with tiny houses is the coating and the permitting and the land. And the land's the most difficult issue to solve because the folks that usually have the land are not the folks that need affordable housing. So our model allows the folks that have the land to highly monetize that land while providing home ownership to someone. So it's not just a one-off. You can put these in your backyard as a granny flat or ADU, but they also are actually more meant to go together and to stack vertically. So there is a racking structure that these slide into vertically and by being here on a small lot setting up very quickly i think we can put about 70 units even if we only stack three high so we could put a couple of hundred here if we were to go 10 high it's not exactly like the brand that we're pushing but it is a vertical, high-end design, yet affordable urban trailer park. Think about an RV park. Okay. It's a vertical way to do that. So you own your RV and you park it in a slot. Right. This is a structure that these can go vertically. And it also is a semi-permanent structure. So folks aren't going to be flying around all the time in their casitas, but in five years, let's say you decide you want to move your casita, well, we can pull you right out of that rack put you on an 18-wheeler truck and move you to another rack or put it in a backyard. So you're no longer bound to the land that you own your house on. And we think that's the way that the world's moving. So the casita, this little box behind me, came from actually another box and a sort of living and social experiment I did where I took a 33 square foot dumpster and converted it into a tiny home. The biggest surprise really was that my life was actually a lot better in a lot of ways in that dumpster than it had been in a 3,000 square foot house. But the design was not really on point and part of the reason why was I was using very traditional crafts folks from the architecture community to think about a 33 square foot space and they're just not really trained to think that way so I thought I'm gonna go get an industrial designer somebody that designs products to make me like an iPhone I can live in when you think about small spaces natural light high ceilings, clean, light surfaces make a space feel large. So we wanted to be able to transport it, but I also wanted high ceilings. So we built it and designed it from the ground up. There are 5,000 hours worth of engineering in the beta version, mostly by BMW design engineers. We're making them a lot more like a car than you'd make a home. There's almost no wood in this. It's going to be made on a production line, almost like a Model T. And what that allows us to do is get something really beautiful, uh, but also get the cost way down. But you still think of it as a, as a home, as far as permitting and as far as all that. That's right. We permit these as you would a RV. 
So we don't need any special permits to put these in the urban space. And they're gonna be at a level of affordability to where you know, folks working in a coffee shop on up will be able to, to afford one. So there's a fridge, this will actually double in size. Uh, you have a little uh, dishwasher there, a convection oven and microwave in one, some induction cooktops, so your sink here, and then uh, plenty of cabinetry uh, space. All right, so this is the main living area. Underneath here, we decided to go with a trundle bed. The bed is always in a tiny space. You know, I learned a lot about this in the dumpster because this is 90% of the square footage of a dumpster. And by going really high, we were able to slide this up underneath the kitchen and bathroom. So this is designed so you don't even have to make your bed, you just throw it up under. I hate making the bed. All right, you just throw it right up under. So this glass holds uh, about 12 people. It's really, really strong. This space is my favorite space in the casita this glass cantilevered cube. What's really cool about this glass is that it's electrochromic glass. It's a dynamic glass that will start off in a transparent mode like this, and then either with an app or a controller on the wall or an auto setting to where when the sun hits it, it will dark out. So it goes through about five levels of shading to where this can completely black out. It's a real house. You have air conditioning, you have hot water, you have a uh, washer dryer. That's a combo as well. Um, got some more closet storage there. And we've got a nice cantilevered toilet, sink, plenty of storage space and uh, then a roomy shower. The idea here is if I were to blindfold someone and lock them in a casita, they would just think they're in like a small condo, right? They wouldn't even actually know that they were in 208 square feet. So I do wanna stress, this is the prototype. So as prototypes go, you learn a lot. Um, we learned that we can actually make the unit 50% uh, larger. That was one of the biggest learnings. I mean, this is 208. Our production version is 320. What do you mean you um, can? What do you mean you can make it larger? Well, we want to be able to transport it easily around the United States without needing a lot of special types of transport. And we figured out we can actually make it a lot larger. And still tow it with a semi or? Mm -hmm. okay. There's a foundation and right now it's sitting on some blocks. There's a couple of forklift pockets here. It can just be lifted and put on a 18 wheeler truck and moved. So we're using standard equipment to move it around. The city of Austin is fine with you putting these in. I mean, the, you had, haven't had problems with permitting. You just say, I'm going to make a, like an RV park. No, I mean, we don't even say that. I mean, these are coded for multifamily zoning. So let me be clear when we say it is like a vertical RV park, they don't go on zoned RV park property, although they could. They go in, you know, basically anywhere in downtown or where there is multifamily zoning. It would be like an apartment building. An apartment building. Anywhere you can put, you know, that, that two-floor, 20-unit yellow building, you can put a uh, casita rack. I don't want to just solve this problem with a couple of dozen of these on a lot in East Austin. I want everyone to have the, you know, opportunity to own one of these. I'm Jeff Wilson. This is my company, Casita. These are going to be essentially micro units, tiny homes that either can stand alone like this or stack. 
You'll be able to own one for multiples cheaper than what you would rent a one bedroom. You'll also be able to rent these as well. And so we have a variety of places already set up in town. You choose where it plugs in as well. So you can almost think about these as like RV parks, but that are stacked. So your casita will be your RV and then you need a place to put it. And they are coded to comply with all city of Austin regulations. So you don't have to put it on wheels. Let's go in and out real quick. Just everybody walk all the way through to the living room. I wanna see if we can jam everybody in there. And we can fit about 10, 12 people on the glass too. So this is gonna be a world record. Keep going. People go up on the glass if you're intrepid. At the very beginning, when I went to the mayor with this idea, like as, cause he had said, I need 10,000 new homes a year. So look, I can build a lot of these. He said, well, I don't even know where this fits. How are you, hey, good. Jeff? Hey, Bobby. Hey, good to meet you. Where are you from? Los Angeles. Oh, nice. So I started meeting a year and a half ago with the city of Austin coding and zoning folks. Keep moving. And with people at the state and HUD. All right, I'm gonna to try to get a picture of all of us. How many do we have? 19. Because I mean, we're gonna make a lot of these because we need supply. It's too much demand, not enough supply. I'm very aggravated about the price of housing in Austin because I don't think that it's reasonable that people that work full time at any kind of a job really can't afford housing. I'm spending um, like approximately 50% of my income on rent alone. I'm the one who actually doesn't want tiny. But I love this concept of, okay, it's like your shoebox. Uh, if you move from one city to another, take your shoebox and move it to another rack in a different city. Yeah, I like to be mobile. Because yeah. my business is mobile. You know, like I just moved back to Austin for the fourth time. Yeah, and how expensive that is. So, um, for me, it would have been perfect. Better than an apartment. Yeah, way better. Why? Because you can just, because I move a lot. I'm in the internet business. So I can just put all my stuff in here, press the app, and it'll take everything with you. It's easier. I want yeah. things that are easy. I, I told myself I'm never going to move again because it's too much of work. <laughs> this is a place mostly for tech people, in my opinion. It's not for families, for kids, for girlfriends. I'm only one person. Yeah. I don't have anything else. One man army. The cost of moving them, we think it'll be a couple of cents a mile, which I don't know, what do you pay a moving service, right? And if you don't have to pack anything and don't have anything outside of your home, I don't think it's too bad of a deal. So this is a uh, mini split air conditioner. We have, uh, I think it's a 60 amp fuse box there. And then all of the connections for utilities are in this one small area. So the idea for this was inspired by this, right? So, you know, rather than having a power and a uh, data plug here, we wanted everything in one clean, tight space. So you've got your sewer, your electric, water, sprinklers, fiber, all here within a 12 inch by eight inch place. And that allows us with some oil field equipment actually hookups to be able to quick plug, quick connect. So it becomes almost like a plug and play sort of structure for your utilities. It is kind of like an iPhone, right? Because we are making a single unit that on the surface has just a couple of options, but then there are apps. Yeah, the, we'll have a different wall material. In the long term, we're going to have a tiling system that allows you to plug in various types of components, but that's probably uh, version 2.3 or so. And so you're going to be able to do a lot of things long term with this in terms of customization. Not only on the interior of plugging different things in, but you think about that rack structure. Eventually, folks that make tiny homes could make ones that plug into our racking structure. So we could make open source for, your open source for the structure. 
and we can make a super, super low cost version. We can make a dorm room version, we can make a food truck version, a homeless shelter version, right? When you've got a sexy box, there's a lot of interesting things you can do. Mm -hmm. So we are a product company. We're not a real estate company, so we sell the units and we sell the racks to either cities or individual landowners or whatever it might be. Now, where is the land? We're using small pieces of land that no one else could use, right? So in Austin, there are 3,000 pieces of land that are too small for a traditional developer to want that have nothing on them. Yeah, and I'm the other thing is right if now. you're a developer, um, is a whole covered land play thing as well, right? So, you know, you've got a piece of land that typically you wouldn't be able to do anything with until right. you're going to build whatever you're going to build. You can put that rack up, right, lease out the slots, and then when you're ready to turn that dirt and build a hotel or something, you can take apart the rack. So it's engineered to disassemble as well. Yeah. For this prototype, did you source the door? Was that an existing? No. So one of the issues with this prototype was a lot of this stuff was custom. So it made it very expensive. It's all really high-end stainless stuff. To build one of these is very expensive and cost prohibitive. To build a thousand is not. I mean, we're not making them even like a prefab house or a trailer because we're making them like a Model T. It's on a real manufacturing line because that's where you get the ability to scale and where you get your costs down. Because if ultimately we're trying to make these affordably, then we need to make a lot of them. There is a sort of rise of the zeitgeist around people wanting to live on less. Consume less and experience more. Be in areas of the city where they can do that. Have more disposable income. It's definitely a one person, maybe two. All of these societal forces in this zeitgeist are converging really around doing something different. <laughs>